disclaimer before I start. Uh, Trailblaze, I mean, I do a lot of stuff. I write and produce music or whatever, but uh, I'm basically known as a DJ, so I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the Trailblaze thing. We play other people's music. Uh, we're on a pedestal, which is a bit ironic now, because that's where we are all the time. Uh, but um, like we, we are basically just delivering other people's music and giving it up to the real Trailblazers. And disclaimer too, I'm playing some music. It might get a bit loud and annoying, but we're DJs, that's what we do. Today we worship at the altar of Miles Davis. Uh, I'm really lucky to have basically uh, spent my last 20 years playing music for people, but even when I was a kid before that, when I was 11 or 12, I was doing that anyway. Um, just telling people in the kitchen who, was m who were my friends or whatever, I was like, did you hear this record by The Clash or whatever? Did you hear blah, blah, blah? And that's basically what I've been doing since. It's just, I mean, it's a bonus if anyone ever listens, but uh, that's the way life has basically become for me. And I was honored if there was one person listening back then, they were just like, get lost, I'm not interested. But um, even if it's one person now on the dance floor or on the radio or even here today, if it's one person, I always gonna never lose sight of the fact that um, you're really lucky to be able to just uh, pass on some great music and pass on the, the wisdom of the real trailblazers. Uh, for me, it was punk that really kind of got it. Uh, people have a kind of misconception because it's like a fashion thing and Mohicans and all that. And that's all great and the fashion of punk is interesting, but it was always, to me, it was just a, an attitude. Uh, it got me into a kind of music that was very kind of um, into equality, uh, whether it was race, sex, whether it was anything. And uh, I was delighted to be uh, involved, or not so much involved, but I was really delighted to get punk. Now I felt it passed me by, because in the 80s, I'd felt that I'd missed punk, like the kids today who feel that they wish they were around when Nirvana were there. But then suddenly, I discovered the new punk, which is rap music, and I was there right in the thick of it at the right time in the 80s and in the 90s and beyond, and it really changed things for me. It gave me the same energy that this punk gave generations back in the day. My favorite band, The Clash, who you just listened to there. I always felt, as I said, that I missed this at the time. But I went to school in town and I was walking down the road when I heard that NWA track blaring thousands of yards away from Comet Records where I ended up working, just down there. And uh, it changed things for me. No, earlier on it was stuff like pop music. It was a good time for pop music. Michael Jackson, Prince, Madonna, even U2 who I'm gonna play now. I mean, I'm no U2 fan now, but I kind of got a bit of a spirituality um, from the kind of music and it, it kind of led me into this, almost like an epiphany that this is sort of this crazy uh, thing that I couldn't put, um, could, couldn't put a finger on it, but I knew that I loved music uh, then and it was my life basically. Um, it was like falling in love. It was like meeting a girl for the first time and actually being knocked out. I'm gonna play a couple of clips which demonstrate that. But like when I hear good music, that's what it's like. It's like falling in love for the first time. And I'm lucky enough to be able to fall in love many times every day in that regard. This is the music that became the soundtrack of my life, really. I did have a problem with uh, hip-hop because I, I was kind of grew up PC and right on with the punk. The punk music uh, had taught me uh, a lot of, I, I, I found a lot of difficulty basically with the whole um, the homophobia and the sexism and I'm lucky enough to be working in the arts. That would have come anyway. 
But uh, I was challenging this when I was 12 or 13, so when people like Mary J. Blige took the macho out of um, hip hop and brought back the Aretha Franklin, Billy Holiday vibe, uh, that really me meant a lot to me. Now, I'm probably running out of time. I, you're, I'm playing a little clip that sampled Michael Jackson um, from Jay Dilla, my favorite producer. It's very hard to, again, put your finger on it, put words on music, but uh, I could just, this stuff just cracks me up. I've been at music festivals where I've stayed in my tent listening to music for three or four hours. Uh, in the States, when I was in my peak party years, I remember listening to What's Going On by Marvin Gaye four or five times in a row at night while my friends were out partying. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, I've partied as well, and I'm not going to talk about Alter States too much today, but we have, we have uh, got that release in many ways, but uh, for me, it's always been about music, and that's the kind of release I get. Uh, I'm a record collector, always have been since I was a kid. Uh, the culture, the vinyl, and everything about it is, uh, I've just been privileged to, from back in the day, looking at sleeve notes, from digging in record shops and basements for five or six hours at a time, uh, for basically convincing older people that those bits of black vinyl were not worth throwing out, and I'll, I'll do the good thing and uh, carry them to the, to the pawn shop myself. Uh, but basically, I've been really lucky to have led in, true hip hop mainly, it has to be said, into music like jazz and in into the into the, the paths of all the great trailblazers. That's just music, obviously, this, it's the same with every art, but I mean, even if I could just mention Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, Rita Franklin, Billy Holiday, Dinah, Ella, Curtis, Sly Stone, Fella Cootie, Sheik, Kraftwerk, Michael Jackson, Prince, Public Enemy, The Pogues, Tom Waits, Carl King, De La Soul, there's so many, Dilla, this is Milt Jackson, by the way, Lee Perry, Jill Scott, Gil Scott Heron, the Stones, Miles Davis, Coltrane, Diz Bird, The Beatles, Amy Winehouse, Erica Badu, A Tribe Called Quest, The Clash, Lauren Hill, James Brown, and Tito Puente are just a few that I just wrote down in two seconds um, before Newell went on there. Uh, I'm just really lucky to have all these people in my, in my life and to be able to pass on that music uh, through many, many others. Uh, it's a great privilege, and I still feel like I'm that person in the kitchen uh, except this time it might be more than one person listening and uh, I'm really lucky to be uh, basically showing you the real trailblazers who've made a difference. So thanks a lot.